A wild man, Bigfoot-like cryptid, allegedly stalks the Mogollon Rim in Arizona. It has been reported since at least the 1900s, and with Native American stories and legends going back much further than that. There have been many accounts of someone either seeing or hearing this alleged cryptid of the area. Hikers and campers have also allegedly had violent run-ins with this elusive creature. The Native Americans of this region, more specifically the Paiute and the Hopi, have their own legends, stories, and names of this cryptid. The Paiute story, Sinahaha, is said to eat people. It is also said to carry a basket with thorns to place his victims. Many people generally describe the same thing, but there are somewhat variations in some of the details. For example, Sometimes it may have white, gray, black, or even brown hair. It is also said to give off a foul odor. And it is also described as having either fiery green or red eyes. A cryptozoologist named Don Davis claimed to have seen a large hairy creature with expressionless eyes and a square shaped face and head. This occurred in the 1940s while on a Boy Scout trip near Payson. In 2006, Colette Altaha, a member of the Mountain Apache Nation in Arizona stated, it was all black and it was tall. The way it walked, it was taking big strides. I put on the brakes and raced back and looked between the two trees where it was and it was gone. The sightings are not just limited to the Mogollon Rim. There have been other sightings elsewhere. As you can see here, there have been sightings down in Phoenix and as far down as Tucson as well. But most sightings seem to be centralized around the Mogollon Rim and Payson. In 2014, a student reported that she was hiking the Canyon Point Trail near Payson when she allegedly saw a tall looking creature drinking from a pool of water. The student stated it was human looking, no hair on it but full of bumps. The eyes were kind of a brown red a thick big nose, small lips, no expression on his face at all. It then took off running like a person.
In the summer of 08, a man and his friend are surveying an area in Apache Sitgreaves National Forest when one of the men is pelted with rocks. They claim that the forest was eerily quiet and they noticed something lurking in the distance. The men claim to have seen a bizarre creature with huge facial features. Sightings have also been reported in and around Prescott, Williams, Alpine, and Clifton. Also, they allegedly date back much earlier with the early pioneers rumored to have run-ins. What is this cryptid that haunts the state of Arizona? Where did it come from? Or has it always been here? The following is an article that was published in the Arizona Republican Wednesday, June the 3rd, 1903 by a man known simply as I.W. Stevens. Two years ago, says Mr. Stevens, I had business in the northwestern part of Arizona that took me in the neighborhood of the extreme lower end of the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River in Mojave County, Arizona. Having the misfortune of getting my arm broken, I took a trip to the river to kill time and catch a few beaver. I constructed a skiff with the aid of a friend, and when my arm was strong enough, I took a trip up the canyon as far as I could go with a boat. A few miles above the entrance, I hauled my boat upon the sand and got ready to examine the rock walls. The first thing that attracted my attention was the imprint of bare feet in the sand. Thinking the tracks had been made by some Indian, perhaps a Paiute or Hualapai, I began looking the gorge over with much interest. Going down the stream a short distance, I found more tracks. The third day of my stay, I saw the head of a man on a bench of rocks on the north side of the river. Evidently, he was seated on the edge of a cliff some distance above my camp. I rode upstream a little above the point where I saw the man's head and part of his shoulders above the greasewood brush. Climbing up to the bench, I had some difficulty in finding a place that I could get over the ledge and be on a level with my strange neighbor. I finally succeeded in approaching closer to the point. I saw sitting on a large boulder, a man with long white hair and matted beard that reached to his knees. The creature was unaware of my approach and I gazed upon him for some moments unobserved. He was about 50 yards away and in full view. He wore no clothing and upon his talon-like fingers were claws at least two inches long. A coat of gray hair nearly covered his body with here and there a spot of dirty skin showing. I had found the wild man of the rocks. At that moment, a rock loosened by some animal came rolling down. The creature turned his face toward me. Horrors! What a face! It was seared and burned brown by the sun with fiery green eyes. With a wild whoop and a leap, he was up and over rocks and cliffs like a mountain sheep for about 75 yards. Then he stopped. He was armed with a queer-shaped club, large enough to fell an ox. Brandishing this bludgeon, he shrieked and chattered for a moment, then started toward me, roaring and still flourishing his weapon. Faster and faster he came, and my hair began to stiffen. I am a poor runner, so I stood my ground. When the creature was within 15 yards of me, I raised my rifle to fire, thinking to cripple him. As I glanced along the barrel, I heard a growl just above the wild man. He also heard the growl and braced himself for the shock. I drew a hasty bead on the cougar and pressed the trigger. When the smoke had cleared away, the mother cougar lay dead where the wild man stood. The man himself had disappeared. The two young cougars were still on the rock, apparently greatly frightened by the report and echoes of my old sharp's rifle. Reaching hastily for a cartridge, I found I had neglected to buckle on my belt when leaving camp. 
so I hastily retreated to the boat, where I found everything as I had left it. I surfed the boat off and drifted toward camp, which was near the cougars. There lay the old cougar where she had fallen. The wild man was standing over the two cubs, which were also dead, he having beat the life out of them with a club. He stood a moment gazing on the carcasses, then got down on hands and knees and drank the warm blood as it flowed from the death wound. The sight sickened me. I stood up in the boat and yelled. The man sprang to his feet, took a long look at me, then fled up from ledge to ledge until he reached the fourth ledge where he stopped. Here he flourished his club again and screamed the wildest, most unearthly screech I have ever heard, then turned and sprang up the craggy wall of the canyon. Is it possible that this account could have really happened? What is your opinion? Post in the comments to this video what you believe actually happened. If you have had a cryptid experience and would like to tell your story, email me at the email below.